Hi there, this is NFI Hammer, and in this video I will be painting my very first Locust Heavy Destroyer. If you've come to watch beautifully painted models by professionals with 10 years experience, you've come to the wrong channel. This is a beginner channel where I document all my failings and all my mistakes so that other beginners can feel less intimidated and have more realistic what models will look like. Anyway, let's get started. I picked this Locust Heavy Destroyer up from the Imperium Magazine, issue number 73. So it costs 20 dollar dues in Australian money. Um, I've talked about the Imperium Magazine multiple times before, but it's a really great way of just building up your army uh, if you're interested in any of the factions in that magazine. I think there's a new one coming out soon called Combat Patrol that has even a wider selection of different armies. But the magazine also includes the how to build instructions. I've recently found actually a subreddit um, that you can go to, I'll link down below, which has all the instructions. So if you ever get a kit and you've lost the manual or you don't know how to build it or you want to build a different configuration, it's actually really super easy to find the instructions. Um, I was really interested in the lore of these guys. They seem really different to any of the other Necron ones, so I did a bit of digging. But basically, like, the Necron warriors or immortals that kind of given up the chance of ever returning to their bipedal human form. So, like, they change their body into these, like, floating chassis of, like, annihilation and destruction. Um, and there's even like deeper into the lore that they were like cursed by the Catan and stuff like that. So super interesting if you're into the lore. I'm just using my normal Rust-Oleum black um, primer paint. A lot of people in the comments are not big fans of this. They say it's a bit too thick, um, but I've been using it now for over a year and I find that it does a pretty good job. I did probably do it a little bit too thick, I've jinxed myself um, when I was doing this model. I was just trying to get it into all the nooks and crannies. I also took off the two, um, you know, armor plates there, as you can see, just to get easier painting. So I'm starting with a warpstone glow and I'm just trying to get into all the recesses just to kind of pull out the detail and the highlights. And then in the actual model itself, I'm doing the same thing as well. And I also kind of do this as a base coat uh, for any of the gauze natural like energy. Um, you can probably skip this step and just go straight to like the moot green. Then the Rune Lord Brass is, you know, the Sherikan bread and butter. Um, and the, the black primer is what, you know, the reason why you need to do it is that the colour of the metallic really pops with the black background. I've tried it on white and stuff and it really just doesn't work very well. It does require two coats, um, so actually after I filmed this I went back and coated it a second time just to really build up that colour. Then Lead Belcher is also like the secondary colour, I guess you'd call it, of the Sherikan Dynasty theme or the Canoptic theme. And, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, pick out different areas in the model that wouldn't necessarily be armour plating, but still be like metallic circuitry and really just trying to break up the model from just the brass and the black. Then um, in my head cannon, the heavy destroyers, which is what I've got here, are sort of like immortals, whereas like the regular ones would be warriors. And in my color scheme, I use this rune fang steel to signify like the seniority or like the, you know, the high rank of the immortals. So when they've lost their mind and they become a locust heavy destroyer, you know, I wanted to keep that silver there. And I also read that you shouldn't really use one colour just once on the model, so I'm also painting kind of their hovering platform jets um, the same colour. 
So this is the Moot Green. So if you don't have the Warpstone Glow and you only got one green color, I recommend just getting the Moot Green and using that for all the Gore's energy. I'm trying something a little bit different there with the ball as well. I've kind of painted the, you know, ridges that Warpstone Glow and then the highlights in the Moot Green. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Let me know in the comments what you painted yours. I'd be interested to know. And now I'm using a bad and black just to kind of go over any mistakes that I've made. Also I like to color in um, these areas before I highlight them later with gold. And yeah, it's just kind of touching up the model. That's why I'm not super worried nowadays about getting paint somewhere that I shouldn't because it's very easy to just come back and touch up. So this is the gold color. I'm using uh, Retributor Armor here and I'm just trying to pick up the highlights and just try and you know, um, make them pop. And then I've also started doing this new thing recently where I kind of highlight the rectangle of the glyphs with a little bit of gold. It's not very noticeable. Um, and I'm also coloring in the circles as well. So it's a new thing, um, but I just find that from a distance on the tabletop, you know, it really helps them pop a little bit. And then I'm using Agrax Earthshade as sort of cryptic armor gloss kind of alternative. So because this is a brown shade, it kind of turns the brass into a bit, you know, richer color, as well as, you know, all the paint going into the recesses to kind of creating those shadows and depths. It's a really, probably really important step um, when you're doing this color scheme. Otherwise the brass color just comes off very plasticky and it's meant to be, you know, the living metal. So Nuln Oil, this is more of an optional step, but over the silver colors, I try and just put a little bit of Nuln Oil on it and it just kind of dirties it up a little bit. And, you know, if the paint goes into any recesses, it just creates a bit of a shadow, um, which is good for this cord here as well. And, you know, all these sort of ridges and stuff inside is kind of helps. Um, you know, break up the model. I noticed when I um, put it on its stand that you could actually see this chest piece. I originally wasn't worrying about it because I thought it was on the underside. So I'm just um, painting top part brass and the bottom part silver, just so that, you know, again, creates a bit of visual interest. Um, so um, because there's still a lot of black on the model, I've got this Citadel Layer Paint Dark Reaper and I'm actually going to try and edge highlight um, some of the black areas. Edge highlighting is a real a massive weakness of mine, so I've just been practicing it out on the bottom of the um, base. And so here I'm just highlighting the face because he's got like half a mask on. And then I'm just kind of picking up any areas on the weapon and I'm just trying to do a little bit of highlighting um, where the sun would sort of catch the ridges. Again, it's a very subtle effect, um, totally optional. And finally, I've got um, this Mr. Hobby paint, you know, metallic blue green. And I use this to show sort of the Necron, you know, time warping, um, you know, anti-matter, anti-gravity technology. So I'm breaking my rule about not having paint just once on the model, but I find this is a really nice effect to kind of make it hover. So to do the base, I'm using iron, Martian Iron Crust, and I'm just using an old paddle pop stick here, and then a toothpaste to just spread it around. I forgot the camera angle here, so apologies, but just trying to blend it in with the plastic rocks that came with the Heavy Destroyer. And you really don't need to use too much, like you can really spread it out thin because you want variance in the texture. And you know, the bottom base is a texture in itself. And I'm using my flat gray primer here 
and I'm just kind of giving it a quick thin coat over the top but because there's not really too much details in the miniature you know rocks and stuff it doesn't really matter if you lay it on too thick or at least I haven't really noticed too many problems so far you really just want to cover that red color as much as possible if you don't have a gray primer um, to use you can use storm vermin fur here and I'm actually still applying just a quick dry brush over the top of the model um, because my spray paint is or rattle can if you're American um, you know it's a bit of a blue green blue gray kind of color and I want to kind of desaturate it take some of the color off and storm vermin fur is more of like a you know um, gray pure gray without any blue tint to it then to make it kind of alien-y, alien is that a word? Um, I'm using uh, Jean Steeler Purple to just do a very, very light coat, picking up just the edges of some of this um, texture paint. And it just kind of brings sort of like an eeriness, uh, foreignness to it. And then the green from the Necrons really complement with the purple and it just kind of helps it pop a little bit but it's definitely one of those less is more situations. And then I'm using a T'Challa Lilac, which is an even uh, lighter purple, but here I've actually put it on way too thick. You can see my um, dry brush. I've got too much on there, so I've actually created some streaks, which is not great, um, but hopefully not too noticeable. If you've got any tips around dry brushing, uh, feel free to leave them below. I respond to every comment that people leave. And then I'm trying this out. I haven't really done it too often, but I'm using Corax White to paint some of the bigger rocks here. I've kind of flip-flopped quite a lot on how to paint the bigger rocks. I've been just kind of painting them storm vermin fur so that they blend in but I wanted to try seeing like as these are actual like games workshop sculpted rocks I wanted to bring a bit of attention to it I do come back and do a second coat over it because it doesn't really work with just one coat and then I'm using my trusty Agrax Earthshade and I'm just kind of coloring in the rocks which gives it a bit more of an earthy uh, tone I've also um, painted the skull Rakaf flesh and I've painted the little um, Necron Scarab Beetle there with the Rune Lord Brass. And there's also like a metal pipe sticking out. So I painted that one um, with my silver lead belcher color. And the last step, which I think is actually the most important step, is just painting the rim. You know, you can leave it gray or you can paint it any color you like. You know, um, But for me, I've found that painting it black black actually really like frames the base and kind of draws the eye away from the rim so that your eye is on the model which is you know where you put the most time um so i find that you really can't beat black as color and then just for the final little bit of detail i like to add some grass tufts from gamer grass I've also been told to use more than just one type of tree. I used to only use the alien turquoise. So now I've got this other reddish color that I'm not really sold on, but I don't have <laughs> very many choices. So I'm just adding one tuft of each just to bring a bit of life to this, you know, alien planet. I'm really happy with how this model turned out. The building was easy, you know, with the push pin, it was very simple instructions. The base is cool with a lot of detail. And then the model itself is really different from any sort of Necron infantry, you know, very bipedal human form, you know, getting something that's quite unique and sort of alien, I guess I've used that word a lot today. Um, but yeah, just really love this model, excited to see how it's going to perform on the tabletop. And I think by painting it the same color scheme as the rest of my army will really, um, you know, help blend it in. Let me know what you think on the comments below. 
If you've made it this far, please consider leaving a like, comment, and most importantly, a subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Anyway, until next time, see you later. Bye.